Okay, hey everybody, uh, just a quick update. I want to update you guys on what's going on. Obviously, we've had a bit of a unexpected rally in the markets. Uh, lots going on and want to unpack some of this. Uh, put a lot in the chat already so you guys have some idea. But um, basically, the ETF money is coming in and we can see that by the IBIT. I had posted a video two days ago right when we broke over above 25 on the BlackRock IBIT uh, ETF. And this thing's just been taken off. You can see this thing gapping higher. Uh, it's brand new, so um, but this does indicate quite a bit of money coming in. I had posted that on uh, TradingView as a live video, but they uh, they did declined it because he said it violated their house rules. But over here on Twitter, you can see I talked about that two days ago. And um, I misspelled BlackRock. It's a genius. But uh, anyway... Um, yeah, so that's what's happening, and a bit more of a short squeeze, possibly. Interesting that Arthur Hayes has uh, flipped his position, sold his puts, that thinks this does have legs, and we continue to go higher, so I just want to unpack this a bit. And um, I just posted something new on TradingView if you wanted to, to see that, but more importantly, I'll cover that here. So just jumping over into the uh, chart head. problem is we're hitting this resistance level at 48K again, and... Uh, Let's take a look at a different chart. I'm going to go through a couple of uh, time frames, but uh, that golden pocket, you know, I think we could double top here, certainly have some resistance at 47,000. Uh, my alerts just went off that we pegged a little bit higher. Um, let's talk about this real quick. The one hour, four hour, seeing these uh, ERI block order blocks and nice big one here right above that 44K. So that was a good strong indication. Didn't have it on, didn't have my alerts set on it. So I'm going to create that on this four hour and the one hour. I did have my alerts on the one hour of buy blocks. So let's see, I'll put an alert on that for the ERI Pro. And um, the specifically the... Not sure that we can do the buy block portion of it. Let's see the alert here. Hmm. I guess yeah, this would be it. That uh, green sign. So let's just do that. I'm gonna have that once per bar close. So anytime we have a four-hour buy block like that, it's gonna let us know. And uh, I'll just put a note in here: buy block four-hour Bitcoin, because uh, we can see that that followed through very nicely, and that was good close. So basically, I'll create that on the four-hour, and over here we can see that. Uh, uh, I did trigger it a little while ago, so let me show. I do have this already set, basically the ERI Pro, uh, and it fired as we can see here. So if you guys, I know you guys don't have this yet. I'm working on getting a hold of Joe for making these available, um, but let me just show you that here. Where did that go? I don't know why it's popping up on the left-hand side now. The alerts, notifications, and um, they've changed this a bit, actually. So... Um, anyway, we don't need to uh, go into that. Let me jump back to the charts. So let's take a look here. This is the uh, weekly chart. Um, big candle here. I mean, no, kind of important to see how the week closes. Uh, there's evidence. People are saying we push over 50K. And, um, you know, look, uh, it's uh, I, new information equals new decision. I still, you know, I thought we would pull back and roll over from here. But if we, it looks like we will close above this 45K level. And specifically, if we can, you know, push up into this region, you know, the problem is it could easily be a double top and we still roll over. So I would not be FOMOing into this at this point. I would be taking profits in the golden pocket because we just barely touched on it back here and uh, and wicked down almost immediately. We, you know, that 50K level is going to be strong resistance. The big round numbers always are. When we hit to 100K, we'll have a pullback more than likely, you know, 50K. Certainly, I think this does happen. And But the good news is we come down and retest this 44,000, 45,000 as support. And uh, so as we've seen a number of times, uh, many times, this thing uh, comes down, tests it as support, and then goes higher. So we want to be waiting and watching for that pullback if we get it for the bounce. The next bounce is going to be very strong and powerful. We're just not sure where it is. It's impossible to tell. And there's a lot of conflicting uh, signals out there. Let's take a look at the uh, DXY really quickly. Um, DXY did push up into this 105 range, kind of running out of steam, but we want to keep an eye on that and see if we see the uh, DXY push up here, which it certainly could up to that 105 level, that would push us down. And, uh, you know, I'd really like to see that. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but to give us a stronger bounce point. Take a look at the total market cap here as well. The uh, lot of sell pressure up in this 1.75, 1.8 trillion level. And look how far away it is from the uh, EMAs, which are turning up. But still, I think this should come back down to give us legs for the next push higher. And some news about Shiba. You know, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. So um, let me just come come back through, make sure we covered all of the scenarios here. And uh, again, DXY could go either way here. It's kind of strange how it's just sitting there not doing much of anything. But also in the upper trending uh, channel here, we're hitting that upper boundary. 
And if we get above that, you know, we definitely want to pay attention to this on the weekly time frame. And if I turn on the Bollinger Bands, uh, they're pretty wide, so that's not going to be really an issue but uh this uh trend channel um looks you know again we're pushing that upper boundary so i think uh, at some point we see a pullback uh you know if this this could shoot higher but i just don't see it <clears throat> we're on declining volume i uh, let's take a look by the way at the uh rsi and see if there's any bearish divergence on these things because that could give us an early clue we're about to roll over so let me open that up on the uh, stochastics RSI. Interesting. The interestingly the okay there it is. <clears throat> Getting a bit of a bounce down the lower edge and starting to cross on this weekly time frame. So that is interesting, and uh, the no divergence there. So that could indicate this uh, does have legs and continues to go higher. It's just really hard to tell. And when in doubt, stay out. Right. So. Uh, we've got the uh, RSI pushing higher along with price, so I don't see any divergences there, but I just, I do feel like we're overbought, like pull back into this range. Going into the halving would give us that much stronger bounce point. So I would uh, be cautious here, but, uh, you know, certainly um, be ready to change the the uh, our decisions. Any bounce from here, though, because just specific, sorry, specifically, we, we this resistance trend line here, we broke above that. So to come back down and retest that, that would be what I would like to see. Okay, so let's keep an eye on this. Let's uh, jump over to some altcoins as well and go down the line, seeing, uh, doing, I'm seeing some nice bullish engulfing candles on some of the ones I posted in the, uh, in the chat there. So let's just kind of go down the list. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Uh, ETH looking good, breaking above its downward trending resistance so that's good if you have your trade success checklist out then you can start checking off some of these like breaking above overhead resistance this should give us some strong support here so uh, ETH looking good and um, you know some good news uh, coming out with what was that news I just posted about the ERC 404 let me pull up that article because we want to find out we want to keep an eye on that sorry I've got monitors all around me guys I'm just uh, pulling this down here so uh let me just pull this up that coin that went up twelve thousand percent crazy right so erc 404 kind of interesting that it's the uh using 404 like a 404 error on the internet right uh this for so just to unpack that uh, this will boost eth and i think you know eth narrative is looking really strong in the next uh, bull cycle so um yeah, it's called Pandora. Isn't that interesting? I, I hadn't heard of it, so I'll unpack that a little bit later this week. Not sure what it is, but it's the first token based on the new ERC-404 tokens. And uh, went as high as 32000 Crazy, right? In the first week. Starting from a low of $250. So only 8,000 tokens. Um, I wonder, you know, what the total market cap is and the fully diluted if they are going to drop more out. I would not chase this. I'm not sure it's even on uh, TradingView, um, what the uh, symbol might even be. So just let's put that on our radar as far as that will be good for Ethereum. Uh, also hearing some really good news about uh, Solana. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Put it on our radar too for the new firefly and uh let me just pull that out that could potentially take the transactions per second from a staggering you know they're already industry leading at fifty thousand transactions per second but this could take it to five hundred thousand to 1.2 million so totally game changing uh let's see so i'm going to follow this on twitter i hadn't heard about it until i was just listening to uh arthur hayes this morning and um uh, let's see. Interesting. Uh, earned 1.4 million arbitrage in Solana in the past five months. Uh, who's this? Uh, a lot of people messaged me how to get started. Uh, that's interesting. So that's that's a conversation for later. I wanted to pull up what this thing is and just so you guys are aware of it. So that's on Twitter. Let's see. Firefly and Solana. Let's see. Let's see. Salsi NFT platform and Solana. Introducing NFTs with embedded licenses, low in trading fees, and real time analytics, on chain data. Not really telling us a whole lot here. Um, let me dig into that. Didn't I post an article on that already? And I didn't really want to get into that necessarily for right now. But uh, let's see. Fire Dancer. Why am I saying Firefly? Sorry, you guys. I got that wrong. Uh, Fire Dancer. That's what it's called. It sounds like it could be something else. All right, Fire Dancer Solana. Again, this uh, just game changing level of transactions. Let's see uh, here, second Solana validator and 
having a hard time getting to the meat of this, you guys. But uh, again, 1.2 million transactions per second would be staggering. So let's just see. I'm going to pull it up on Twitter and we'll get uh, uh, follow this for more information. And so, look, I'll come back around on this because it's um, I want to unpack that and give you guys a little bit better information. Here is what is Fire Dancer, Selena's new validator client. Uh, this is on alchemy.com and I can pull it up on Medium too. So we'll do that real quick. And, uh, and coin and coin CDC. So what is it? Why is it a game changer? Let's just do this really fast. Next generation independent validator for the Solana blockchain and designed by Jump Crypto. Have not heard of those guys. But uh, it's a new ecosystem, a new part of the Solana ecosystem. And uh, fairly new, although November 22, the validator, Firedancer, did 1.2 million transactions per second. Again, that's going to be the huge narrative. Uh, we've seen Metis go flying high based on transactions per second, Kadena, and uh, of course, um, you know, everyone's watching Bitcoin and the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Taproot and the Lightning Network. But this would, you know, Solana could could potentially surpass, I'm not going to say surpass Bitcoin, but it's going to give Ethereum a run for its money. It's already handling more transaction volume throughput through the Ethereum bridge than Ethereum. So that's uh, worth keeping an eye on. So look, I'm going to keep this, uh, I'm going to update you guys, do a video on this specifically because I don't want to get down a rabbit hole just yet on that. But um, a lot of things on the uh, in the pipeline and on the horizon for all of the uh, crypto, the industry here. So, um, you know, Arthur Hayes still talking about potential bank failures, though, as the uh, bank term funding program runs out in May, sorry, March 11th. And, um, but on the other hand, there's always the other hand, right? So quantitative easing, money printing for the current, uh, I almost said regime, but uh, that's about right. And um, to stay in office, the old uh, Biden uh, team and the Democrats, uh, you know, they're starting to hurl uh, stones here left and right already. Just saw a headline, Tucker Carlson had interviewed Putin and uh, the Democrats want to uh, file espionage charges against Tucker. Isn't that fun? So um, yeah, button your chin straps, everybody. It's going to be an interesting year for sure. Let's take a look at uh, the CME futures here. Also resistance just overhead. We don't see any unfilled gaps, so that's the good news. Uh, but um, you know, have to keep an eye on all of this. Uh, total market cap again, pushing up into this area. I think 1.7, 1.8 trillion. You know, we need to pull back. This thing rose so fast, got away from the 21 day EMA that uh, just some some degree of a pullback. We're going to want to wait and watch. And also our, you know, our TSI's overbought here. This, um, you know, it doesn't have to do anything. Bitcoin does Bitcoin things. But uh, the overall market cap, you know, remember that when we hit 3 trillion, that was the top of the market, all the markets, including Bitcoin. So these big numbers we want to be aware of, this 1.8 trillion, lots of sell pressure, previously hit it back uh, here when uh, the ETFs were approved. And so we need to get past that hurdle. I think we need a pullback to give us the strength to bounce higher on that. All right, going down the line here, let's take a look at Chainlink. Um, I still like Chainlink a lot. You know, it's it pushed up. It's following exactly what I might the doodle here is to push up, come back and retest. Nice buy block in the 1750 range. This would be a great place to dollar cost average into uh, Chainlink and uh, and then take profits as we go higher. But I'm going to hold Chainlink. I think it's got, uh, you know, 5 to 10x potential in this bull run. And uh, just going down the line, helium also looking pretty good. Nice bullish engulfing candle on the daily. So uh, keep an eye on helium. We have an ERI going green, just waiting for the TSI to, to turn up and also go green. So uh, helium, you know, nice buy block down below as well. So these are starting to set up, you guys. We've got ERI TSI on Lido Finance. We've got uh, a key. So we're just waiting on a bell to form, but we have the four kings lining up. ERI TSI signals gone green. So uh, helium, sorry, Lido. Keep an eye on that. Um, injunctive also looking good with bullish engulfing candles, getting back above the 21 to 50, so we're back above the ice. To ERI, TSI, don't have signal yet, but uh, these are starting to look really good. So I would, I would, um, you know, advise caution, but uh, let's see if Bitcoin still pushes higher, I'd say, you know, into the weekend. But, uh, you know, I'd rather see this push higher and come back and retest again for us to have a safety zone to get in with these. We don't want to be uh, chasing them and uh, getting in late. Phantom Coin starting to push higher here. Let me just look at it on the weekly real quick. 
you know, getting an ERI in the weekly and the daily. So actually the daily was back here. So, um, you know, we want to be ready to start deploying. It's just there's so much sell pressure on Phantom Coin. I'm not sure why that is. And uh, but this would be a good place to buy. Let's see how the week closes on Phantom if that bullish engulfing candle can hold. All right, let's go back here. Let me jump over, by the way, to so I'll run through some of these. Render, Sui. Uh, Sui's looking really strong here, breaking up into new highs in the price discovery zone uh, still. So, uh, Sui, you want to have some of that. I've got a little bit. Uh, say, you know, also looking good. I think I'll re-enter Say here. We have an ERI TSI. This is uh, also going to compete with Solana. Has a long way to go, but uh, that whole narrative of transactions per second, you know, this is going to be huge in this uh, bull run optimism taking its time getting a little overbought i'm surprised it hasn't pushed higher here so and then of course solana you know it's just uh limping along here it's a bit it, this thing could take off at any point and let's see you're looking good on the uh, weekly time frame but a bit overbought showing the uh, bag of money on the uh, trend indicator so these are usually times to kind of wait for a new key and bell and uh, then it goes higher so i don't know solana keep an eye on that Celestia has been looking good here, breaking up into new territory. So that one, I would suggest having some of that as well. It's in Coinbase. Uh, near protocol, I like near a lot. Look at those buy blocks layered on top of each other. So we have ERI, TSI, Signal, and Bell. I'm going to push near up to the top. That looks really good. And um, let me see and make sure to add that to the M3 trader list. It's already there. So let's jump back over to that. Um, first though, IMX, I think I talked about this morning and ENS, just taking a look through the lists. Okay. Jumping over to the M3 active trader list by zone. We have optimism. You know, I think <clears throat> this, um, kind of surprised it hasn't headed higher here, but a nice bullish engulfing candle. So, uh, this, uh, these are starting to run AVAX looking really good here. Nice cup and handle. So I think AVAX, I'm just, I'm going to have to issue, issue some off the cuff buy alerts. You guys, I don't have time to sort of get into buy prices. Uh, if you're watching this, I would own some optimism. I would have some AVAX, AVAX setting up. Well, uh, Metis also starting to sort of turn up higher. It's got some sell pressure overhead though. And I think, um, you know, it's come so far so fast. I don't know, Metis, a uh, bit questionable on that. I'm going to put it toward the bottom of the buy list uh, because some of these other ones are, are looking better. Matic was looking good the other day, not so much now. Uh, Cass, uh, Cass is pushing up. It's got some sell pressure in here. I'm going to move this down into the warm list, kind of do a little uh, rearranging. Adam, Cosmos looking really good. Green here. I like to look at the weekly on Cosmos. Look at that big bullish engulfing candle and a fresh ERI. So Adam looking really good, especially this has great follow through when we start to see these turn. I may want to wait for the TSI to go green, but this is this is a great looking candle, you guys. Uh, Adam uh, looking very strong, so I'd have some of this. And um, Alluvium also in the buy zone. Alluvium breaking out back above the 50-day EMA, so that looks really good. So these are all staying in the buy zone. Metis, I'm kind of questioning because of that Basel block right above, so I'm going to move that down a bit. Uh, so the so far, the top ones, uh, Optimism, AVAX, Adam, Alluvium. Uh, let's see, uh, say... Uh, I do like that candle. That's looking good. I'm going to push that up. Say is on Coinbase. Uh, do your own research, but um, that has a uh, hot narrative. And again, it's kind of in, people are saying it's the next Solana. It's not, but it's in that same category. The uh, decentralized file storage, it's just uh, kind of it's lost its momentum. So storage, kind of lukewarm. Filecoin, um, you know, trying to, it, I, Filecoin looks better, but the volume has been such a decline that I would be careful with this. We have some sell pressure over here, but on a uh, daily basis, uh, higher lows looking pretty good and bullish engulfing on the weekly. So I'm going to put Filecoin up into the uh, buy area as a, to start lagging into this. Again, don't go all in. You want to build positions over time. Dollar cost average if they go lower. Let's see, Alluvium, I don't need it on both. We already have one in Coinbase up above. Phantom Coin, um, you know, this is one you want to have for this bull run. I, what I would suggest, though, is wait for that 21 week, 21 day cross over the 50. That has been the signal all the way along. If we get another ERI, then maybe uh, jump in a bit early. But uh, to be safe, you want to have this 21 day crossing over the 50. So what we can do there is do an alert on that real quick. Add an alert on the uh, 21 day crossing up above the 50-day EMA down here. Uh, there we go. So we'll get notified when that happens. Phantom Coin, remember, went up 18,525%. 
in 2021 alone. Uh, so we, you know, don't think it's going to go that high this time, sort of law diminishing returns, but uh, definitely one to own. Definitely one to own here, and uh, now might be a good time to start legging into that. I am going to put Phantom up in the buy category, the buy zone, <clears throat> along with Near. I do like Near quite a bit. It's on Coinbase. Uh, this is a Binance chart, but same, same. Um, coming off higher lows in that buy box right here, so this should push higher, and uh, I do like that. Celesti we talked about, pushing at the new highs, price discovery. I'll put that up in there as well depending on how much capital you have to deploy you'll have to determine which ones are the right ones for you but uh here dydx a little bit hard to buy it's only on crypto.com but if you have access to it i believe it's on mexc also that is looking good it's on kraken okay so that's right uh kraken you can buy it so i'll push dydx up in the buy zone as well breaking out of the downward trending channel needs to confirm here though so i would wait uh, on that actually i'm going to pull it down on the warm list because that could easily sell off and still be in this uh, trend channel but want to keep an eye on it so we'll put an alert for when that breaks up a little bit higher so let's see that would be around three dollars again there's round numbers really important so i'm going to just push it put it at three dollars and crossing up good all right so that way we know that it's solidly breaking out of the down or trending uh, channel as it were so KAS, uh, I'm going to leave it in the warm zone. Buy, buy there's some sell order block pressure right here. So leave that alone. Storage again, uh, kind of lingering. Stacks, now this is something you want to pay attention to. And uh, I mentioned it in the Retire Rich class yesterday. A friend of mine, uh, a guy that I know and interviewed for the Crypto Summit, uh, was at the Satoshi Roundtable where the biggest whales and uh, smartest people are at. And they said they kept hearing kept hearing stacks stacks so uh, this makes Bitcoin easier to use I haven't had time to research it that much but um, you know probably some sell pressure up in here but right I'd say above two dollars would be a great place to uh, buy this I like to buy into strength and because that's likely sell area or a pullback to this 21 day but great looking chart on stacks and it is on coinbase so getting a bit ahead of itself a bit far away from the EMAs but uh, it's in a nice support resistance zone if we go back to that weekly and move this over it's got uh, it's got some nice support here so if it does pull back it'll be buying right around this dollar 20 but in this whole zone here probably a good place if it's being so so highly talked about bit of a cup and handle breakout also so uh, let me move stacks i'm going to put that in the buy zone not necessarily a buy but uh you know that sounds like emerging technology we want to pay attention to um cardano you know it's uh it's starting to turn up yeah, as much as i've been hating on cardano lately this is a nice looking chart and um you know this might be a good place to start building position in cardano it did go to three dollars in the last bull market so from here that would be a what would that be two five six x you know six x three dollars yeah so um hey beats a sharp stick in the eye but it is a slow moving battleship and uh you know i don't know it's 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 just taken so long for them to get anywhere i think that uh they're losing the uh, favor of the whales and the big money although they have uh, you know they have their their ada army uh let's look at ATOR here we did very well with ATOR. I remember catching this run back in october september october peaked out coming down starting to bounce again it's gone sideways in a consolidation pattern but we have eri tsi signal turning green um you know what it's done well for us in the past that was one of our picks in the retire rich course or uh class only problem is it's on crypto.com not easy to get uh, mexc you can find it looks like it's on uniswap so um let's just take a quick look at how far it could go if you were to buy up in here and it gets back up into the channel here so it's a 4x uh, that's that's a nice nice uh looking chart there so i would say have get some ator in uh, your bags and see how it does so for the rest of these i'll just go speed round uh, ajix you know a bit topped on the tsi uh veracity lots of cell pressure overhead the uh, metaverse tokens just the same thing a lot of cell pressure overhead pith network is the one to watch it's a little bit early um ogn i do like a lot uh, they have a lot of cool things happening but i just need i want to see it out get above this uh 16 cent range and i uh, talked about it retire rich yesterday uh, go check out their website hear the videos 
a team, venture backed, a lot of good things, but uh, this thing could still sell off. And it's it's a later. I think this would be a build a position over time. A lot of sell pressure up overhead, though, so we'll keep an eye on that. Boson protocol, uh, you know, that we like this in the 2020 rally. It's all red on the radar. I would stay away from this one. And uh, that's about it, you guys. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. We've covered some really nice opportunities. Again, Sui and Say. Let's see. Do I have Sui in there? I, I do like Sui here. And um, nice ecosystem. I'm going to move that up into the buy zone. Have some Sui. Have some Say. Not financial advice. Silly names, I know. But uh, those they, they, the narrative's good on these. I, Arun also looking good here. It's got this big sell order block. But look at this 21-day and 50-day turning up higher. I'm going to move Rune to the top of the warm list. It's got to get above that sell pressure. Otherwise, I'd like that chart very much. All right. Looks rare. Uh, O-N-E. Uh, Harmony 1. You know, I do like that. Lots of ERIs in this. A buy block zone. You know, the problem with Harmony is... Let's see. Before I say that, I know we were buying it. But uh, I believe it was on KuCoin because the problem is you can get it on MEXC, but I don't think it's on Gemini or Coinbase yet. So that's the problem with Harmony One. And, uh, you know, it's got a lot of sell pressure up ahead. So let's uh, not worry about it right now. Again, AVAX we talked about, Axie Infinity also looking good. And well, it's got a lot of sell pressure overhead. I think we've covered the hot ones. There are obviously thousands of coins, and we just want to focus on the stronger ones. I will just pull up the AI tokens list before we wrap up here and uh, just see if anything is jumping out at us. I see one here. Would it be yeah, a pal? I, I don't know. This could easily sell back off. Um, this is getting pumped. Raven coin, a lot of sell pressure in that area. So be careful with these. Uh, ALI, you know, is still like the project. Lots of sell pressure overhead. So we'll wait and watch. Wait for the right time on that. Other than that, I'm not seeing anything else really that I like that much. Um, you know, render coin, I do like a lot. I'm going to be buying this certainly above $5 because then that is price discovery zone it's still in price discovery zone so it's just consolidating above that four dollar level i think um you know render is a buy here let's just see uh look at the weekly i mean these charts look good i think it could pull down but this one it's it's one of the leading ai tokens let's see if this closes above here so this still could sell off and we lose that tsi now we're getting a key though if we get a bell i'd say a render is a buy so i'll move that up to the top of the uh the watch list all right so that's it for today guys just wanted to give you updated uh keep you updated we'll see what happens here i you know i definitely would watch this one hour four hour and uh that remains to be seen is it going to be a busy weekend you know or is it going to be quiet like we've seen now that there's institutional etfs out there but this four hour large cup and handle see that breakout so uh, yeah, these cup and handle patterns are great. Um, on the vol index, though, it is in overbought territory. So I am going to do an alert on this just to see when it starts breaking down below. Uh, we want to know that crossing down below 80 because that would be an early indication on the four hour. That would be time to uh, get out of Bitcoin and likely take profits on everything else. So, all right, guys, there was a lot to take in all at once. But, um, you know, um, this thing continues to push higher here, but it is having trouble at 46, 47,650. And this is five days in a row, green candles. Um, you know, I just, I'm a little bit leery of the weekend and what happens Monday. So ideally we get a pullback, you guys, and then this buy the bounce is going to be perfect. We've got the 21 and 50 peeling up and just taking a quick look at the uh, pie cycle top here that we've been watching actually i did want to show you one more thing so pie cycle top this is going to push our, you know this guesstimate right out here into april still possible and <clears throat> and that's a good segue into our scenario for 155k bitcoin because um there's new news out on some of the smoldering fires that we have you know the hyperinflation and uh, Powell just recently said, you know, we have to, this is unsustainable. The QE money printing, they're going to have to start QE money printing to pay down the U.S. debt. There's an alarming statistic, I think I put it in, in Retire Rich or M3, kind of about uh, we're not going to be, the, the debt service on our debt is going to be greater than the GDP of the United States soon enough. So 
Um, we're going to need to see some serious money printing, but uh, that's not what really what I wanted to show you. This, so we have this scenario here. It was looking less and less like the last pattern, but now with this latest push higher, it is looking remarkably close to this 2019, 2020 push up where we shot up to the old high in a relatively short period of time. So let's zoom in on this, you guys, because let's just take a look at this. This big green candle, you know, it's starting to overlap pretty closely. All right, so let's, uh, let me massage this a bit. It doesn't need to hit exactly, but um, you know, we could see this massive green candle here. And if we see that, then we know the the bull run is in, and I was right. It's going to be a left translated, a uh, left translated cycle. So, you know, these numbers are still in play, and I mean, we'll see. It'll be incredibly validating to be right on this, and uh, these things continue to sort of catch flame and burn stronger. MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor bought another eighty. 5 million, 86 million of Bitcoin continues to pump money uh, and his company stock looking very good, by the way. Uh, we did look at that in Retire Rich. So if you have money in the stock market, MicroStrategy is a great surrogate for uh, the uh, markets. And, uh, you know, why pay the management fees of the ETFs when you just own MicroStrategy? So only a matter of time before Apple and Tesla start to pile in, you know, and, and who knows, MicroStrategy, uh, micro, uh, sorry, um, Microsoft, they all sound the same, you guys. Microsoft, I'm surprised they're not buying yet. Uh, maybe they are, you know, and they would have to divulge that in their Q1s and uh, and their 10Ks. I, I think that's what it's called. And uh, finance major should know that. But uh, at any rate, it doesn't matter because we are seeing this ETF money starting to flow in. Look at this chart again on the IBIT. It just continues to push higher. So, uh, guys, this could be it. Uh, you know, we want to remain cautious, but this is a important line in the sand. If we close above 48K, you know, that will be interesting. But right above it is we have the 50K, very strong resistance. So I'm going to reiterate this. The next pullback, want to be ready to deploy capital and get in this market. Uh, and it could be deeper than, than we think. We just don't know. I, I'd love to see us back down on 38K. But uh, new information equals new decision. This arrow playing almost exactly. Where does this arrow go from here? Look at that. Uh, who knows? Big question mark. So let's see how we close tonight and uh, what happens over the weekend. I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, so a bit of a long video, but I uh, wanted to get everyone on the same page. So have a great weekend, everyone, and uh, I'll be in touch. See ya.